it's like to be lonely. No, I mean really lonely. Empty. That's what it is. Loneliness has no soul, no colour. I was lonely as a kid too. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I mean, how can kids be lonely? Well, I was. Just got on with it. I suppose I had to. But no one told me that you take the loneliness with you as you grow older. My mum would hug me and smile, tell me tales of knights in shining armour, that there's someone for everyone, that there's plenty of fish in the sea. I just smiled. Well, I knew I wasn't quite the English rose, stood proud waiting to be picked by a gentleman. No, I was more of a, a wallflower, just hanging around, wilting, waiting to go to sea. But mums are never far wrong. Well, some anyway. And this ugly duckling, well, didn't quite grow up to be a beautiful swan. But a nice smile and a scrub up well. So much so that I met the man in my dreams, Peter. He was handsome too. No poetry. Sang songs. He even dedicated a song to little old wilting wallflower me. I was buzzing. When a man loves a woman. Something like that anyway. You know the one I mean. Percy Sledge. I was dreaming the dream. Walking on air. Felt like such a div as I couldn't stop smiling all the time. <laughs> Talk for hours and hours about nothing. I was in love. He was a few years older than me. Snazzy dresser. Funny. Yeah, he was great to be around. My mum called him a man's man. Never heard that term before. Apparently, it's when they like racing, football, and go for a few pints with the mates in the pub. Male mates, of course. It's the alpha male, man's man. That should come with a government health warning, man's man, aka selfish bastard. He knew I was smitten, and I guess he took that as a sign to do what he pleased, and he did. He stole my heart and he walked all over it and me. And then, he discarded it in the gutter like a ciggy. Signs were all there. Cut me up every time I spoke, ignoring me. Always going out, staying out. The smell of stale perfume on his shirt. Okay, I know it wasn't quite lipstick on his collar. It's too cute for that. But I wanted him in, here with me, where I thought he would want to be, where I thought he would always be. I loved him. And I thought he loved me too. Well, maybe he did for a while. Who knows, eh? Eventually, the time came when I was only too happy for him to go out. I would watch the clock, hurrying the fingers along till he'd be gone. When I heard that door shut, I'd breathe out like a caged bird thrown to the breeze. The freedom. 
the tranquility. And in the silence, I would think, why couldn't I have got someone who would dance with me in the dark or walk along the shore holding my hand? Instead, I got the phony in a fancy suit who promised me everything and delivered nothing. Good old boy, the main man, the main man's man's man. The silent treatment at first. You say we're the good at the silent treatment, but he was the past master. It was when silence stopped. First time it happened, it was just a flash. And white everywhere. I woke up on the floor, blurry eyed, as if I had kaleidoscope colours in my head. This twisted, thunderous, piercing white light. I could smell. His aftershave it was heavy and knocking me sick. But it was nothing. Nothing compared to the smell of failure spewing from our long lost lover's bed. It was then I caught my reflection in the mirror. Bruised, all bone tired, oh, so tired. I look like an old woman. I mean, no wonder he treated me like an unwelcome, unpaid bill. I was an old hag. He turned me into an old hag. lovely colour of blues. Well, it's if you're not on the receiving end of one, of course. Have you ever counted how many colours are actually in a blues? Loads. Not just black and blue. There's colours like green, yellow, even purples. A fancy name nowadays. The colours like, like voluptuous violet, yearnful yellow, gushing green. I mean, they can be like mesmerising, even beautiful in a ugly kind of way. I had a beautiful rainbow arch over my eye. There's no pots of gold at the ends of it, really, but just bags of hate and hate. It's funny what distracts your mind when you've just been. He was always sorry later on. Nothing too sincere. Maybe thought I'd tell someone. But I wouldn't have. Afterwards he'd bring me flowers and perfume. Say if I. But I'd take them. I'd even give him a smile. I mean, that's not talk. Every phony sinew of emotion I could without actually throwing up. So, 
soon as he walks away. I'd lash it all in the bed. You know, I had the best smelling bin in the street. But then, in the darkness, got even darker. face only lit up when she came home from school. Oh yeah, we had a child together. Nikki, a beautiful little girl. First I thought, at least he loved something from this sham of marriage. But then, it was the way he looked at it. I mean, really, Looked at it. It was almost leering. I felt something. I asked Nikki if she had anything to tell me. She just smiled. I even got enough courage to come confront him about it. But it just did the usual sarcasm about slinking back into me bottle and gave me a few more colours to look at. When Nikki turned 16, she ran away. I haven't seen her since. I mean, she called me once that first Christmas. I said, I say, Mother, she should have told me what was going on. She said, I said, Mother, I should have known what was happening. I mean, she was right, of course. I should have told. Maybe I was too scared or occupied with other stuff. She told me to grow a pair and get rid of them. I said, was that even possible? And we laughed. That was two years ago. But I've heard nothing since. That conversation haunts me every time. The so short. Tell me what I did. I read this story about a mum and daughter who killed by the dad. It led them a life of cruelty. And no one knew. The girl had left a secret diary telling all. I thought, how weak are they? And then I froze. Who the fuck am I to even ask that question? I mean, no one talks about it. It's not exactly the most comfiest of conversations to have with your closest family and friends, is it? So I showed Peter the article. He just shrugged his shoulders. So I told him about the phone call with Nikki and what she'd said. I called him a coward. I told him how it was. I grew the biggest pair of bollocks known to mankind. Not even a man's man had a bigger pair of bollocks than I grew. Show me some colours. And when I came round, 
and have to listen to his usual crap about how I'd made him do it. I just smiled at him and said, I'm going to make you pay. He just laughed. So I sat on the floor. Normally I'm shaking and crying, but no. I was smiling. And you know, for a brief second, he was actually spooked. But then he just glared at me, starts laughing again. <laughs> I had decided that there was going to be no more beatings, no more abuse, no more moping around listening to broken promises from Percy Sledge. So I got my phone, showed him the footage I'd just recorded. He actually turned a very Funny colour, pale, ashen even. If I had to call it a fancy name, I think I'd call it a shade of dead man walking white. I smirked at him as I pressed send. He stopped laughing. 